everybody wants to eat a chicken, but you want to do it first, not a predator. Here are seven stunts for keeping these guys alive. Well, at the breeder stage, just keep them in there an extra week if you need to. I think they're old enough for that. They're gonna be like three weeks in a couple of days. Point is, if it's extra cold or wet outside when it's three weeks and it's time to put out your chicks, or you have extra predator pressure, particularly aerial, then just wait. There's a big difference between a four week old chick and a three week old chick. And it's not that much harder. It's just upgrading their water. I don't know, were they on a court? Go up to a gallon, go up from a gallon to a three gallon or even a five gallon. We upgraded their feeder from this little feeder to this bigger one. And we more bedding every day. Maybe you have to apply it twice a day for the last half a week. Big whoop. The second trick you can do is transition them with a chicken tractor. These guys are ready to graduate the brooder. But since they're especially little as they're layer chicks, they're especially vulnerable to crows. We've actually had a few get out. We've lost one or two. What you gotta do, look, Lily's done it today. If there's a divot because the grass is uneven, you put a shim in and they can't get out. She's done it, bless her heart. They're not gonna get out of that. It has to be pretty big. That's probably big enough, see that? And they're getting bigger, so they're not as likely to do it but they could crawl out something like that. This just gets moved every day to new ground. They're happy, they're on grass. Uh-oh, uh-oh, they're getting real spry. This is just one of many purposes for this chicken tractor. And it's gonna be available directly after our Kickstarter. Our Kickstarter starts June 1st to backers. The chicken tractor serves as a good transition. You're outside, but you're still fully protected. And yeah, there's 29, 39 of them, something crazy. You can handle it in such a small place because they're still so small. The third trick, but to get you some of this Premier One shock or not, shock or not, like, still works even if you don't use, oh, it's not gonna get the reward for some of the easiest to use, but it is gonna get the reward for keeping chicks in. I am seeing a problem here. It doesn't sit well because we've got grass clumps right here and a bare spot right here. Those chicks are totally gonna get out. See the slow, if, even when we turn it on, it's not gonna shock. It's the second one up that shocks. A rather quick fix. You could get some tent steaks. We have some garden steaks. They can be metal, because the like I said, the bottom isn't electrified. Well, what about when you move it? Well, it's pretty easy, watch this. Pick it up. Don't leave them there for your mower or children's bare foot. Mr. Brown, should we let these chicks out? Sure. Get over this net, push it down, step over. You're good. Don't go at the corner one. Too, put too much pressure on the corner. You could do a partial situation where you don't let them out all day. They're Come home from work, then let them out. They'll go back in at night by themselves. This is cool because they can choose to stay in there, protected from aerial predators. Now they're protected from land predators with the shock or not fence. The fourth trick, let's go get the fourth trick while we're waiting for them to come out. You want to? What's the fourth trick? The fourth trick is the guard goose. It's constantly looking around. Roman tufted, I like the Roman tufted. You could get the Chinese goose. The Roman tufted is smaller. It's wide, I think it's beautiful. Look, it's got that tuft on its head. A male or female guard goose. I like to get males. The drawback for males is they get ornery within four or five years as they get older. They get to think, it, well, they get to set in that they're a chicken and they try to breed some and they can kill these chickens just because they're just too big and rough. Here's the problem with the female, which that is. She, in the spring, which she might be done, pulls the hay out of the nest box and it falls in the bottom of this chick shell and it can't fall through. The beautiful thing about the chick shell, which is, this is the chick shawl mini me, is the one inch wire mesh it falls through. I don't like to clean it out, so. I think we're gonna go with male geese from now on. Although the female, you get a you get an egg, so there's your pros and cons. And they never become ornery and, and try to mate your chickens and kill them. I believe this is Rosie. If you wanna catch a goose, we're gonna get it, her in the corner, and grab her by the neck. Do it with confidence or they'll, they'll they can bite. This fence is not on, so don't be alarmed if she runs into it. Just checking out our new territory. Well, that's trick number one for a goose is keep them alone. If they have another goose in here with them, they'll figure out they're a goose and they'll start goosing about. <laughs> and they won't be paying attention and protecting the chickens. Well, come on, flap the wings, that's what they do. Grandma gave you four onions. Lizzie, we're tiny. What are you making? I am gonna put the onions in the root vegetables. 
They not come out yet? No. Here's the other trick. See that little goose gosling? Can you get that gosling? This is the other trick to raising a goose. Look at this little goose. <laughs> Three weeks old. Look at that guy. Isn't he cute? The trick is you gotta buy two geese. Nobody's gonna ship you just one goose. Unless you got buy it local from a breeder. You can raise them together with your chicks and then separate them. Dog. You only have one flock? We have several yeah. flocks. You could give it away or sell it. We raised that guy with chicks. And they think he's a chicken. And look at him controlling around. If you were a crow, would you dare to come down in here? I don't think I would want to. She's, he's, he's peering around. He's flapped his wings. He'll squawk. Too much drama for predators. Land predators too. Sure, a coyote could take them down. But it's just too much drama. They like it more quiet. This is like a floodlight at night for robbers, you know? Look, they just came out. And they just went back in. That's fine. That's normal. Fifth trick lies in the coop. Come with me. This is the Chickshaw Mini Mini plans coming soon. Its older brother, the Chickshaw, our most popular of all time, is coming. It will be here by the end of June. And we've designed these predator proof. You notice? Look, remember? Remember how I showed you one inch mesh so poop can fall through? Well, it's no bigger than one inch because you need to have no bigger than one inch openings in your coop for predator protection. Half inch wire mesh on the side is what we use. I mean, you could use one inch, I reckon. Bigger than an inch up here in their nest box. I mean, maybe right there. I found that the predators don't climb up this if they were to get in here. So we can go around this whole thing. Bottom, sides, top, no more than one inch opening. I don't know what kind of coop you have or what kind of system you're using, but for the most part, if you shut your door, your coop door at night and they're in there, and you have no more than one inch opening in your coop, you've solved, and, and that's just the nighttime, which is most of your predators, you've solved 99% of your predator problems. My coops are already pre-designed for predator control. I like to brag about them a little bit. We've got the 20 in, 26 inch flat free tire, and it's a 26 inch so that it's high enough up so the birds can get under the coop. Actually, that is a predator point. I mean, it's for shade and comfort and get out of rain, but they can also run and get away from a passing hawk. And they can get under there and it's big enough. A, a lot of people try to go cheap and get the smaller tires. I don't blame you. These are like $200 nowadays for both. And the smaller ones are cheaper, but the chickens can't get under that. And you want these, you want your coops to be multi-purpose as much as possible. Why, why am I not afraid of, for them without the goose in here? Well, they have this net, and once they are adult chickens, we don't have a problem with aerial predators. Our, ours is a hawk. We do have a problem with aerial predators, but not when they're that age. If we had eagles, maybe we would be still keeping the, the goose in here. But the hawks don't get them when they're that fat, fat hands. They, don't, they can't handle fat hands. The sixth thing is movement. I like to move it, move it. I've had snakes get chicks, I've had snakes get eggs. Trick the predators. Don't keep the predators in one spot. You see me moving it to spread the manure love. They pooped all night right there. Just move it. Not only did you spread the holy chicken squat love to different places, we're throwing off the snakes and other things like that. I don't think when I'm moving coops regularly, I've ever had a snake problem. It's usually when I've gotten lethargic. Lethargic, is that the right word? I wouldn't say lazy, I wouldn't say lethargic. Negligent, perhaps, focused on other things and left the coop in one area in the chicken run on deep bedding and, and a snake has figured it out and gotten in there. Making a practice to have a mobile coop and move it every day. There is nothing I can do for you guys getting out. I can't help you if you get out. That's just a fair warning. People get out, people get out sometimes. Actually, I'm gonna start a prison system. The people that get out, I'm gonna mark them and I'm gonna put them in the bulletproof fence, the compost corner up in the yard. Hey, let's go look at that in a minute. Let me show you this Premier One net. So this is, this is a Premier One poultry net. It's easily put up. We put it up in about 20 minutes. This is two, no, this is three 100 foot nets. And we keep these chickens in here for a week. We move their coop every day inside of it. This is a little hack of mine. I don't use the solar if I don't have to. I only want to use that in a pinch because it's not, it's not as powerful. You don't get as much bang for your buck. So what I've done, I call them alligator clips. I think Premier One calls them links. You can get them there. I've, I've, I've hooked these up. See these links? Takes my electricity from there to there. And I don't get shocked. I mean, I could have my electricity on and not get shocked. Now, if it's been rainy and dewy and these are wet, I've been known to get shocked by them before. And this is connecting to a 
one strand on a rebar post. It could be any kind of post. It's going back to the house. I love the grid, folks. So any chance I get to tap it, I will. Spool, this is like a welding wire spool. And I've just rigged up some bolts that go through. Then you just roll this out or roll this up. Where's that go? Where's that go, Justin? Let's go see. Notice my greenhouse where we kept the chickens all winter. It doesn't have any more than one inch opening. We got poultry wire. Oh my gosh, I'm about, to, I'm about to put those chickens in prison right now. They're getting in our garden. Gideon, can you help me catch some chickens? This comes all the way back. This is a speed right, 3,000. I like the speed right. You can, I, you can get those from Premier One. 3,000 ends up being three joules. 6,000 is six joules. Joules is what you want to measure by, not by miles of fence. That's like walkie-talkies measuring in my, that never works. I mean, best practice would be go directly in it without a link. I just, we just looks like we have a jerry rig here. So you hook up your electric fence to the hot side, the red side, both these are red. I don't know why. It's probably we lost the, the other one and just replaced it. But there's also an emblem there and these comes with instructions. We can turn this back on. Actually, maybe we'll catch chickens and then turn this back on. Before we catch chickens, and turn it back on. Hopefully this is the 120. It is. So maybe you're way out in the field, get you a, uh, you got a big flock like this. If you got a small flock, you, you might could get away with one net, 100 foot net. This is IntelliShock 120. I'm a big fan. It's more expensive, but it's got two batteries. And same thing, this is black for your grounding, orange for your hot, and this is, and you're gonna need a grounding rod to stick into the ground and put this on and then the orange part goes to your fence. It's that easy. We usually keep a spare batteries charged and fill up them out as needed. Look at this, they're happy. The goose especially. The goose was munching on the grass. That's the cool thing about the goose. You can feed them what you're feeding the chickens, but they eat a lot of grass. Look at these guys, they're happy. A week or two more, so maybe six weeks. These guys are, are done with the nursery and we can just put them in with the girls and they won't they won't get out of that. <laughs> I say that as two girls are out and they're not even little. My best bet is to herd them against this fence and get them to jump into the fence somehow. <laughs> Off camera, I caught this bird. Finally got into the bushes. A little fun fact for you. If you ever have a hard time catching a chicken, just set out after it. Don't stop. You're the endurance animal, they're not. You will catch it and usually five minutes or less. What I've done, taking the right leg, put a tiny, teeny tiny zip tie on there loosely, and I marked you as ornery. You will be harvested in the fall, and you go into prison. Those little chicks out there, they will replace you. Same thing here with a, a run. I call this the compost corner. It will also be in homestead builds. You're fencing, 52 inches tall, at least. I mean, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to have a covering. The reason I don't have it, it would hurt to have a covering because it's not as easy to throw your weeds into it. I mean, you could have a covering, wheelbarrow your weeds in there, and then it would be truly bulletproof. You don't have to worry about nothing from the, from the top. But we have cattle panels. We've lined it with poultry wire. You can see down here, one by, I don't know, the one by eight retainer wall for that, uh, for the mulch. And also, best practice, look, you can see it right there. Berry. I don't know, eight, 12 inches of poultry wire or half inch wire mesh so nothing can dig under and get in here to them. Heads up, the compost corner, the chick shawl, the chicken tractor and other builds are coming. Homestead builds, we're kickstarting that June 1st. These two can be the foundations of your homestead. Hey, did you catch that bird? Where is it? Oh, you put it back? I was gonna put it in prison. Uh, the front yard. Catch another one, put it in the compost corner. Okay.